Jared is a PhD, a Associate Professor of Psychology, Director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Lab at UAB. He received his PhD at University of Tennessee, uh, then he was at uh, Arizona State, and then was a postdoctoral research fellow at Stanford. Uh, he's recipient of the 2011 Research Award from the American Academy of Pain Medicine. And this morning he's going to talk about microglial modulation in the treatment of fibromyalgia. Okay, I'm going to uh, make an argument today that in order to successfully treat fibromyalgia, we are going to have to drastically change our approach to the disorder. Uh, fibromyalgia is not about dysregulated dopamine or norepinephrine or serotonin. It's uh, not about the overactive nerves or neurons. It's uh, not about any of the things that the current FDA-approved treatments directly target. Fibromyalgia is about neuroinflammation. It's about neuroinflammation in the central nervous system. And the key to treating fibromyalgia is to reduce that inflammatory process in the brain. We're going to have to develop and discover and employ both pharmaceutical treatments and other interventions that can get to the central nervous system and target the cells that drive the inflammation. And I think when we have those treatments, I'm going to discuss several of them today, when we have those, we're going to have an effective treatment for fibromyalgia. But not just fibromyalgia, I think, let me see if I can get this. Not just fibromyalgia, I think when we have these treatments, we're going to have an effective treatment for chronic fatigue syndrome, for irritable bowel syndrome, for gulf war illness, uh, and a lot of other chronic multi-symptom illnesses. Not just those, but also major depressive disorder. I think we're gonna have a treatment for chronic uh, traumatic brain injury. Uh, I think we'll have an adjuvant treatment for rheumatoid arthritis when the inflammation has infiltrated the central nervous system and other rheumatologic disorders. And not only those pathological conditions, but I think a lot of the uh, phenomena that we associate with normal aging like uh, increased fatigability and increased pain sensitivity and decreased cognitive function, I believe a lot of those things are not actually inevitable. I think they're driven by inflammatory processes. So if we can employ these treatments, we can actually prevent or reverse several of these adverse aspects of aging. So the implications of this treatment approach, they're huge. And this field is wide open for exploration. So I'm really excited to be working in this area. Okay, so let me get through some uh, objectives and some caveats, and then we'll dive right into it. Uh, the three things we should all know by the time we get done with this talk. One, we should understand the basic states of the microglia and how those different states are very important in terms of our health. The second thing, what are the major treatments we can use to kind of coax these microglia cells into the place we want them to be and to have them take the form we want them to take? And then third, I want you to know uh, kind of the next major research goals, what we're working on next. So I do have some disclosures, no financial disclosures. My money comes from uh, mostly federal sources. I do have some nonprofit institutions that, that fund my work as well. Okay, I am going to talk about a lot of compounds. I'm going to show you dozens of compounds, in fact. None of these compounds are FDA approved for fibromyalgia most of these compounds are not FDA approved for anything. So we're going to be talking about research a little more than clinical practice. And I hope ultimately these things translate to clinical practice. But a lot of these things, in fact, none of these things are mainstream right now. Now, some of these are agents that you could get a hold of right now and you could try. It is possible, depending on how uh, comfortable you are deviating from the mainstream, but if you did that, you would be doing it in an experimental fashion. So I just, that's an overarching caveat throughout the whole talk. Anything I'm talking about, you can be guaranteed it's not FDA approved. This is my fibromyalgia slide. There is only one of these uh, because we probably don't need to talk about this too much. Oh, by the way, you're going to see these, uh, this artwork here. Uh, there's a cool class at UAB about the intersection between science and art, and there are a bunch of artists, and I came in and talked to them about fibromyalgia, and they all drew different pictures. So you're going to see these cool uh, figures come up that the class made for uh, fibromyalgia. But um, you know the deal with fibromyalgia.